Well, if you got a dollar, won't just lousy it down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget fine. You can take or leave me, but you ain't got much time. Cause I just keep on rolling down the line. Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Trusty Huckster Mercantile is a vintage reseller with a presence on Etsy, focusing on vintage glass, porcelain, and objects of interest. I've been recording a variety of videos pretty much just to fill my time while I am still experiencing the stay-at-home orders uh, for the state of Illinois. And last week, uh, because I broke down and finally started ordering online to just fill my need to source new objects, I did an unboxing video. Uh, that one was primarily as a result of a re uh, shipment that I'd received just before that one, which came to me damaged. I received some positive response to that first video, and I do continue sourcing online because I do not have access to any estate sales, garage sales, Goodwill, or anything like that in my area. So I have a variety of uh, shipments that are either here or on their way, all of breakable materials. So I'm going to continue this as a maybe a mini series, or we'll see how long it goes, how long it, it remains interest, interesting. Uh, but I'm going to focus on the unboxing, primarily talking about how it's packaged so that everyone can learn something about it. If you're a reseller, you might get some tips from another uh, shipper to see how they do it, what's good, what's bad, what my experience is, and you know the process of uh, opening and unveiling those items. If you are purchasing, sometimes there's not a lot of control that you have over how something is shipped, but it may give you a little bit of insight into when you receive a shipment that's packaged well. Maybe make note of it. If it's a buyer who takes the extra time to provide you a fully positive experience from the moment you buy it to the moment you put it up on your shelf or use it or whatever you do, people a lot of times may not be thinking about that, but there's some merit to keeping that in mind. So hopefully these videos will have something to offer everyone. And uh, if not, feel free to jump ahead. If you do like what you're seeing, appreciate it if you give a thumbs up to these videos. If you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate the subscribers. Just recently I bumped over 100 subscribers, so super excited by that. And just kind of seeing where this uh, channel will go. So thank you very much and enjoy this uh, unboxing. All right, so this is a, another unboxing uh, video. This came in a couple days ago, uh, but I had not had a chance to open it up. So in general, it looks like it's in pretty good condition. No uh, obvious dents or dings or you know crushed corners as we've had in the past. Uh, this one appears to be, I'm gonna guess, a priority mailbox underneath. Uh, that has then been wrapped in a garbage bag to cover up the priority mail indications. It, it is what it is. It was shipped to me, U.S. Parcel Service, Parcel Select, uh, a service that I have not actually used. Um, it weighs two pounds, uh, so I'm not sure how much cheaper that is, but regardless, uh, that is how it was shipped to me. There's something underneath the label that I'm kind of curious because I'm wondering if they are shock buttons, which I have not yet seen in any of my shipments. And no, they are not shock buttons. It's a very nice card, but it's there. It's three dimensional. So these, these little raised sections is what I was feeling when uh, I was feeling underneath the paper. So, you know, shock buttons would be nice, but I'm pretty sure those are pretty expensive, so I can't imagine anyone would use them. So nice little uh, stickers, cherish the simple things, believe and laugh. And on the back is a uh, creepy looking cat. Inside, I'm gonna guess there's either a note or my bill. Cute little card with some kittens on it. Dear Patrick, thanks so much for your purchase. This set of canisters are unlike any I've seen before. Enjoy, have a great day. And I won't say who sent it yet because depending on how the unboxing goes, the person may or may not get credit. So, all right, so I'm gonna peel the top off and I'm gonna open up all the paper first. Okay, so worth pointing out 
This is not actually garbage bag. It's a, some sort of a decorative craft paper that the back of the paper, the brown, was, was on the outside. And on the inside is this really attractive magenta uh, chevron pattern. So I don't know if this is how every one of these packages is, is wrapped, but this is a really, it's a nice touch, uh, but really not visible until you've opened it up. Now what's noteworthy about the box, if you remember this is a priority shipping mailbox. It was not shipped priority mail. So out of necessity, it ended up being wrapped with that paper. What that paper did was disguise some potential issues. So you can now see this box does have a crushed corner. From the paper, the paper was still intact. It was taped in really nice condition. Um, it, I would not have known that there was any issue. This, it's not particularly crushed, but you can actually see that both of these edges have been compressed in. So this, this is almost a three-dimensional tab coming off of it right now. So that's just something to be aware of. There's nothing, she did nothing wrong packaging it that way, but it is interesting that the box kind of was disguised. Now I will also say, and then this is a guess, but based on the condition of the box, since it was wrapped, I'm not sure if this is the first time this box was being used. So it's possible some of that damage was from the box's first life, and now, you know, it's no, it's no worse the wear. I would, I would have no way of knowing. I think I made this cut when I used the uh, box cutter. Um, some of the, some of the white though in the cardboard is dirty, which I don't think would have happened with the paper. But regardless. If it's not damaged, it doesn't make any any point. But that is something even I have not considered. On occasion, I've used uh, I use garbage bags to wrap different boxes. Um, it never crossed my mind that then if the box gets damaged and the paper didn't, you wouldn't know it. So now I will open the box itself. So the box has been the tape has been cut, so I can open it up. All right. So on first. Viewing, good start. Really nice air pockets, creating a, a nice layer on the top and along the sides. So there's a, a sheet of them on the far edge, a sheet of them on the side. Some individual ones tucked in. This one's nicely tucked into the corner, so it kept it from shifting. And another one in this corner, which kept this one from shifting. I don't use these very often, to be perfectly honest. When I use them is when someone ships them to me and then I ship them on to somebody else. So they are nicely recyclable. But they're, in my opinion, I'm not sure exactly how much additional benefit they are considering how difficult they are to store. That's just my personal opinion. But you can see just enough to do the sides and the top. great cushioning, but this will take up a lot of space in my storage area uh, to, for future use. So, but hey, it, if it helps make something, make it uh, survive its this journey, then it's all a good thing. So then in the middle of the shipment is the item that I purchased. As she mentioned in the note, it is a canister set. I hope it's not a set because I think I only ordered one, but you know, we shall see. Maybe I ordered more than one and didn't know it. So it is very nicely bubble wrapped. And then this outer layer, it's kind of stuck to it, but it's not taped to it. This outer layer was what was in the bottom. Let me unveil that. And then the bottom itself, so it had this layer of bubble wrap was what that was nestled in. And then another layer of bubble wrap. And then you can kind of see she's created a little bit of a nest with the packing peanuts. And I have since discovered since the last video that these are biodegradable peanuts. I did not know that. Um, so you put these under running water, which, you know, my daughter and I had a boring day one day. So we did that. They dissolve immediately. So no environmental hazards. So there are a, a thin layer of that at the bottom, but enough of it to create kind of a nest that she then filled with the bubble wrap. So I kind of messed it up and I lifted them up. But you can kind of see, you can see the bottom in the middle and then the edges, they're a little bit more thick. So she created a really nice package at the bottom. Did not use the air pockets, but that's where she used the environmental, the packing peanuts. So it certainly served the purpose. 
So everything is looking off to a good start. Now we get to the package itself. So the package itself has a, what looks like several layers of bubble wrap on it. There's one piece of packing tape that seems to be sticking out. I think that's surely by accident. When I had lifted it out of the box, that's what was stuck to the layers of uh, bubble wrap. So I don't think that was intended to be like a pull strip because if I pull it, it's not the top strip. So that was, yeah, again, surely by accident that that was up there. This is a case I mentioned in the first video that I did. I'm not a fan of wrapping with packing tape. The last one was scotch tape. So at least those were little pieces. So typically when I gave a pull, it separated. I gave that as a pull. And all I'm doing is I'm is lifting up a piece of the bubble wrap that's now completely covered by this. So the only way into this is to cut it. And depending on what's in there, you know, that just introduces another way of potentially damaging your piece. But if I sit here and try and tug it or try and, you know, slide it off, I run the risk as well. This piece is a canister, so it's fairly solid. I, you know, I wouldn't anticipate flexing it would be a problem, but something to keep in mind. So I'm going to, I will cut into it. Okay, so basically it was just the outer layer that was really heavily taped. Once you got into the middle layer, this appears to just be wrapped, so it'll be easier to undo. There's a nice multiple layers going around this way with the width of the paper. Oh, well, I spoke too soon because I'm going to open this up. And... We've got another Fort Knox of packing tape and bubble wrap to get to the final piece. But I can see the piece, and it looks like it's in one, one piece, so that's a good thing. So let me cut some more. Out of somewhat expediency, I just ended up cutting around, so I created an empty or an uh, area to pull out. The problem doing it that way is I basically just ruined the reuse of this piece of bubble wrap. And that's what was happening to the outer layer as well. Some of this might be salvageable to wrap some small pieces, uh, but I'm a big believer, particularly in selling uh, vintage, because that's all I sell. I want to be able to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So reducing is only a danger because then you may not have a protected piece, but you wanna be able to reuse it. And this will be less usable because so much of the packing tape, um, even when I start peeling it off, it'll pop the bubbles. So it's less usable. But we're back to the body of the beast. All right, so now we're primarily to the body of the piece. I want to open this in such a way that I don't inadvertently miss its lid. So it appears to be roll wrapped, which is pretty common. Now this is interesting. So this piece, if I continue to unroll it the way I unrolled these, as I unrolled this, the lid will fall out because the lid is reverse rolled. So it looks like what she did was she wrapped the lid one way, put it on the box, and then wrapped it the rest of the way. Because I'm aware of it, I saw it was happening, I didn't let the lid fall, but this would have been just as safe had it been rolled the normal way and then put on so that way as you unroll it, it continues to go in, this, in the same direction. And that's something I've learned the hard way, that if you do the double roll or reverse the roll, it throws people off when you go to open it and you run the risk of something small like a lid or you know, the spoon or whatever, something small that you had tucked into the same shipment uh, falling out. It's the spoon, not a big deal. If the lid that falls out, you probably just damaged your purchase. So the lid is in really good shape. She had photographed it uh, pretty well. Uh, it's got some crazing on it, uh, but in general, it's, uh, it's exactly as advertised, so the lid came through in one piece. The body appears to have its own set of bubble wrap on it that, it, that was then rolled, so that gave it an extra layer of protection. With the end result being the body of a canister that's in perfect shape. So it's exactly as advertised, 
made in Japan is the stamp, but for shipping wise, a piece that's probably from the 20s or 30s arrived in one piece and uh, looks fantastic. Put the lid on and I've got my tea canister. So that was my unboxing video. I hope you found it at least somewhat interesting and I was very pleased that at the end of the day it was packaged exceptionally well. It arrived in very fast order and is going to be a pleasure to have in my tea canister collection. I will try and drop a photo of that uh, right here. As promised at the beginning and is something that's probably worth noting in general, as I continue doing these, if I ever come across someone that did not package well, whether it became damaged in transit, or even if it made all the way here, but they made all the wrong choices, in my opinion, of how to package it, I will not name them by name. This is not that kind of site. That's not what these videos are about. I have no interest in shaming anyone. We all make mistakes. I at no point am trying to say that I am an expert in shipping. I have definitely shipped things that have been broken in transit, and I've always stood up behind that as it's my fault, regardless of what the post office did with it. I have always provided a full refund to the customer if something was damaged and they provided me proof. I didn't make them send it back and I gave them the refund immediately. That's all about good customer service. But in that, in that vein, if I find a company that does a good job, I want to give them credit for doing a good job. And so in this case, if we go back to the envelope that I had received uh, with the very wonderful stickers and everything that was on there and the little cat card, which is actually from the Alley Cat Rescue. Uh, so I'll give a little shout out to www.saveacat.org. Uh, so a little note that came from that was, have a great day. Ah, not so fast. Hello, this is Patrick of the future. I finished recording the clips to that video and that it did include the entire unboxing. And as you saw, everything survived beautifully. And then I did the intro and the outro and what you were seeing was smack in the middle of the outro. However, after a few hours of recording that video, I began to notice a smell and there's really no other gentler way to say that. It literally was just something that started to smell. And it wasn't anything I had noticed during the unboxing itself, uh, which I find somewhat interesting, but the odor somewhat permeated over time to the point that when I started smelling it, I didn't 100% know what it was or where it was coming from. The day I recorded that video, my daughter was visiting with her dog and I wasn't sure if it was the dog that was smelling. So I kind of started doing some research, started investigating my home, trying to figure out where the culprit was and suddenly discovered it was the wrappings of that box. So I never planned on doing any sort of review based on smell but because of that i no longer feel comfortable giving a shout out to this individual seller because while it was packaged impeccably i will say that video was shot about three or four days ago it still smells the packaging is in the garbage every time i open the garbage i smell it again i had to wash the tablecloth that uh, was on the table where I set the box because suddenly that started to smell. In hindsight, remember the cat card? Now I kind of understand some things. I love pets. I love dogs more than cats, but I don't have anything against cats. There's, I'm just not a cat person. But when you're a seller, you need to be very honest with what you're providing. And at no point I would think somebody would say, hey, if you buy from me, your products will smell like cat urine. But it's something as a buyer, it suddenly makes it a little bit more relevant if somebody does say they are in a pet-free and smoke-free home. It's as simple as that. I feel that maybe my sensitivity is a little bit higher than normal because I don't smoke. And the fact that I've been locked in my house for six weeks, I haven't smelled anything other than myself, 
we won't go down that path. But I to have a foreign scent, maybe I was a little bit more hypersensitive to it. But what I will remind you, I didn't smell it at the time I opened the box. So it was just one of those things that it was it was mild from doing the smelling test. It does appear that somehow the cats might have marked the plastic bubble wrap because the box itself did not smell. I believe when I had to wash the tablecloth, it was because when I took some of that wrapping off, I set it on the table. I don't know. It, it, so at the end of this video is now me just erasing the rest of it and just saying it was packaged very well. Please use the video from an educational standpoint from that. Unfortunately, this video does not get a call out to the seller because I feel it is a full package. At no point am I trying to shame anyone. I've said this before and I will say it again. These videos are not designed for uh, you know, negative publicity or, or I don't want that kind of pipe of attention. That's not what this channel is about. It's about learning, it's about education, and hopefully it's somewhat entertaining. If the seller does a great job, I want to call them out. I want to give them credit because as a reseller myself, I spend a lot of time and effort making a really, doing a really good job, at, well, in my opinion, working really hard to provide good customer service and everything that goes with that. If somebody does all of that, I want them to get credit just like if they recognize it in me, I would want them to credit me. But there are other things that go into it and, and unfortunately in this particular case, uh, a pet filled home, you know, maybe it was just one, who knows, but uh, that's not particularly controlled or materials that are not put under a separate a separation. If I had been allergic to cats, if I had been allergic to, it, it is relevant. It's not just somebody's individual opinion. So regardless, enough said on that. So it, these videos, I will actually say what I said on one of the other ones, the one that kind of didn't go well uh, because it, the item had broken, but these are not planned. I literally had recorded that closing and had planned to play it through and simply I had not edited the video yet. And that's the only reason I'm able to jump in here and actually change the ending. I don't know these are going to happen. The sellers don't know that they're going to be put under scrutiny. So this is real, believe it or not. And we will just close this here by just saying, thank you for watching. I hope you find these videos interesting. If you've gotten this far and you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Comment below what you think of the video, what you think of the videos in general that I'm doing. You like them, you don't like them, etc. I'm definitely looking for feedback and seeing where this channel can grow. Share it with your friends, do a thumbs up, all the fun-filled things that you should do for all of your favorite YouTubers to really show them their support and give them some direction to say these are the types of materials we want to see more of. This is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. You can find me on TH Mercantile on all of the social media, including YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Etsy. Thanks again for all of your time, putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Goodbye. Well, if I had a dime for every time I felt this way, you know I'd have a million dollars and a couple bucks in change. Sure was nice to know you, oh, maybe I'll catch you on the New York train. Or oh, maybe I'll never see your face again.